These rare historical photos give an insight into what life was like in different eras, from the 18th century to the 1970s. They show the life of kids during the baby boom and the native people of America before modern cities existed. Ever wondered what's inside a giant statue? Well, this 12th century Buddha statue was found to contain the mummified remains of a Buddhist master known as Lu Quan of the Chinese Meditation School. The construction of the Golden Gate Bridge used a $130,000 safety net to save 19 different men who fell from the bridge over the course of the four years it took to construct. In the 1960s, the coolest bikes were Schwinn Stingrays, known as, the bike with the sports car look. The Stingray was the official bike of the summer, inspiring kids across America to take to the streets and tear through town with their friends causing trouble and having a heck of a good time. This was Brooklyn Supreme, a massive horse standing 10 feet around, who had a gentle nature and a penchant for stealing ice cream cones from children. Wow, look at this incredible body armor. A cannonball not only pierced through it, but also went straight through the young man wearing it. This happened during the Battle of Waterloo in June 1815. McDonald's became a symbol of freedom and when it opened in Russia in 1990, people stood in line for hours to get a Big Mac. Back in the day, women were taking on the essential task of delivering ice to keep food cold, while men were away at war. This man from the Pacific Telephone and Telegraph Company seemed to have a keen understanding of future technology, as he accurately predicted the invention of smartphones and video chat applications. Although we don't have a translation app for our phones yet, we do have tools like Google Translate to facilitate communication. This mask was found by archaeologists in Mexico beneath the Teotihuacan Pyramid of the Sun, believed to have been placed as an offering to the gods during the construction. Bones and human remains were found at the base of the Pyramid of the Moon. This sign is just one of many that dotted the United States to let customers know that if they acted up or got out of control they'd be looking for a meal elsewhere. Ian McKellen has fond memories of filming the Lord of the Rings trilogy in New Zealand, where he says he wasn't involved in any of the technology being invented at the time. The construction of the Titanic involved thousands of workers and took two years to complete. Promoting reading is crucial for intellectual development, and retired teacher Antonio La Cava is addressing the lack of literary access in less developed areas with his traveling library in Spain. Conrad Veidt completely transformed himself to look like a sideshow freak who was forced to smile for the rest of his life in The Man Who Laughs, influencing the design of the Joker in Batman. Dolly Parton and her husband, 
Carl Dean, have been together since her first day in Nashville, but they keep their marriage out of the limelight. Parton explained that Dean has always been her biggest fan behind the scenes. The Victorians were innovative in maximizing space, using warming ovens and radiators to warm food and drinks in dining rooms. Some of these radiators kept drinks as warm as 110 degrees. Glacier National Park in Montana was once occupied by the Blackfeet Nation until the United States government took the land in a land grab, leaving the tribe with a rough deal and a fence to keep them out. Robin Williams, known for his comedy and dramatic storytelling, also showed deep care for those in need by entertaining and signing autographs at a local homeless shelter. On Sunday, July 17, 1955 in Anaheim, California, Disneyland opened its gates at 2.30 p.m., with an array of sights for families across the country to behold. The Statue of Liberty, a symbol of freedom, was actually originally copper and turned green over time due to oxidation. When Clemens appeared on the program in 1969 it was the first instance of a recurring black character on a children's series. Even though it was a largely important role, one that established a positive portrayal of a black authority figure on television, Clemens was unsure about accepting the role. He said, Fred came to me and said, I have this idea, you could be a police officer. That kind of stopped me in my tracks. I grew up in the ghetto. I did not have a positive opinion of police officers. Policemen were sicking police dogs and water hoses on people. And I really had a hard time putting myself in that role. So I was not excited about being Officer Clemens at all. Stuart Freeborn created Yoda by finding a look that he thought would work well on the swamp planet of Dagobah, moving away from giant hairy animals and making something a little closer to what he saw in the mirror. The San Francisco earthquake of 1906 was one of the most destructive quakes to ever hit the West Coast. When it occurred at 5.12 in the morning, no one was ready for the chaos that would ensue. The quake ruptured from the northernmost section of the San Andreas Fault to the triple junction at Cape Mendocino, shocking the San Francisco area with violent rumbling for nearly a minute straight. It left fissures in the ground, signposts for the destructive nature of quakes to come. The crew of Ladder 3 rushed towards the Twin Towers on September 11, 2001, led by Captain Patrick Brown, in an attempt to save as many New Yorkers as possible. Unfortunately, the firefighters went down with the skyscraper as it collapsed onto the front of the fire truck. At 16, Betty Robinson was faster than most grown men and earned a spot on the American team for the 1928 Olympics. Brand Castle, known as Dracula's home, fell into disrepair and needed renovation before becoming a favorite residence of Queen Maria of Romania. It's crazy to imagine Elvis, the musical icon, living in low-income housing with his parents in Mississippi before purchasing Graceland in 1957. After his mother passed away, 
Elvis and his father moved in with his grandmother at Graceland. And it's a good thing she was there to keep him well fed, especially with his love for biscuits and fried peanut butter sandwiches. Just imagine coming across this giant spider crab while diving in the Pacific Ocean near Japan. These creatures can live up to 100 years and have legs that can grow up to 15 feet in length, making them quite the sight to behold. So, here we have a giant wooden rocking chair that is shaped like a skeleton. But not just any skeleton, it's complete with a wide skull and ornate feet. It must have been quite a sight to see this at an auction. Robert De Niro's father, a painter, found disappointment in his own career but was proud of his son's success in acting. The ornate clothing captured in this photograph is rarely seen from the turn of the century, especially in Morocco, where the Jewish community was the largest in North Africa. Women covered their hair and even their faces, reflecting the modesty of the time. Salvador Dali casually strolling through Paris with an anteater, just a typical day for the surrealist artist. And he didn't stop there, he also had a pet ocelot that he enjoyed posing with. Shackleton led several British expeditions to the continent, and there's been a $100 bounty for anyone who can find an actual copy of the advertisement since the late 1990s. The woman's hood must be incredibly comfortable for the baby to be able to sleep so peacefully. Imagine looking out your window and seeing William S. Burroughs and his hatchet digging into a pumpkin before Halloween. If you were familiar with Burroughs' work, you wouldn't be shocked. He was a wild man with an avant-garde sense of humor and a penchant for using weapons. In the last year of his life, Burroughs was especially into his weapons and often went target shooting or practiced throwing a knife into a board before having his daily vodka and coke at 3.30 in the afternoon. The Gallic Wars, fought between 58 and 51 before Christ, saw brutal fighting between the Romans and the people of Gaul as Caesar attempted to bring the area under Roman rule. Both sides suffered violent and brutal deaths, but the Romans ultimately declared 20 days of thanksgiving after a relief army mowed down the Gauls. Imagine having parents as cool as this couple. Not only do they look cute together, but they also know how to maintain their motorcycle. It's incredible to see young love that lasts a lifetime and includes tearing around the countryside on a moped. Their style in the older picture is classic, and it's amazing how cool fashion never changes. How fast do you think that bad boy goes? Bela Lugosi started his career in the United States by securing bit parts on stage and in films, before eventually playing the part that would define his career, Dracula. The earliest versions of toasters weren't the kind of set-it-and-forget contraptions that we have today, instead, they only toasted one side of bread at a time and had to be monitored by the eater in order to achieve that appropriate level of char.
The remains of a complete Thracian carriage and two horses were discovered in a Thracian tomb in a village called Svestari in northeast Bulgaria, buried alongside a collection of various artifacts, which means that the horses were buried alive. This colorized photo reveals Emperor Nicholas as a handsome, slight man with blue eyes and a steadfast look in his jaw, alongside Princess Alexandra, both doubling down on their belief in autocracy and mysticism, and having children with Haemophilia, who were later assassinated by the White Army in 1918. Laurel and Hardy's relationship evolved from business partners to close friends over the years, and even as Hardy's health declined, their bond remained strong. Despite its sleek design, it's hard to imagine actually riding this motorcycle due to its impractical features. On July 5, 1924, Babe Ruth knocked himself unconscious while attempting to make a catch, but he got back in the game and scored two more hits. Lawrence of Arabia is actually based on the true story of Thomas Edward Lawrence, a British officer who helped bring down the Ottoman Empire during World War I by destroying their supply line. In 1917 and 1918, he spent most of his time blowing up sections of railroad tracks, leaving trains stranded in the desert. The Queen's Guard are known for their stoic presence, but even they can't help but crack a smile when faced with a charming munchkin. Grand Duchess Elizabeth Fyodorovna was known as one of the most caring royals of the 20th century before her untimely death in 1918. Born Princess Elizabeth of Hesse and by Rhine in the United Kingdom, she married Grand Duke Sergei Alexandrovich in 1884 and became an impressive addition to the Russian Empire. After her husband's death, she opened the convent of Saints Martha and Mary and became its abbess in 1909. Unfortunately, New York City is a target for low-flying planes, and one of the earliest memories of a plane smashing into a building comes from July 28, 1945, when a B-25 bomber crashed into the Empire State Building. Fourteen people were left dead following the incident. Therese Fortier Willig remembers it as a living nightmare. During the 20th century, Native American families were forced to constantly relocate or live on inadequate reservations, leading to a cycle of poverty and illness. This era of forced assimilation was one of the worst periods for the rights of Native Americans. Many of the humiliations of this era have yet to be mended. In the 19th century, there were tricked-out hearses like this that took on the gothic look of a cathedral and brought that pomp and circumstance to the transportation market. One of the most well-known group of chorus girls in the early 20th century was the Ziegfeld Girls, who performed in the Ziegfeld Follies on Broadway. Doris Eaton Travis, the final Ziegfeld Girl, continued to perform until 2010. Before cell phones, taking a selfie required figuring out how to work the timer on a film camera or using a photo booth. How does the Dimaction actually maneuver? 
Can it take a hard turn or is this strictly a vehicle made for high tailing it down straight and wide lanes? This whale of a car was designed by American inventor Buckminster Fuller during the Great Depression and at the time it was believed that the aerodynamic body would be great for fuel efficiency. Unfortunately the car never made it past the prototype phase with only three original Dimaxions available along with two replicas. As unwieldy as this car looks, it looks exactly how Fuller thought the future would be. Imagine a world where everyone was driving around in one of these, traffic would certainly be interesting. Doesn't this Old West photo just confirm our thoughts about the Wild West? Stephen King, known as the Master of Horror, initially struggled before his book, Carrie, became one of the biggest books of the decade. These four famous outlaws were a part of The Regulators, a group of self-appointed lawmen who took justice into their own hands in order to carry out the law in New Mexico the way they saw fit. While we think of Billy the Kid and Doc Holliday as constantly evading the law, they were, for a time at least, celebrated young men who lived outside of the law to some extent, although that didn't last long. After Billy the Kid shot and killed an actual sheriff in 1878 he became a wanted man. Still, for a brief period of time he was an inspirational antihero to the people of New Mexico. The Hoopa tribe of Native Americans in northwestern California have excelled at basket weaving, elkhorn carving, and fishing for centuries, particularly for salmon in the Klamath and Trinity Rivers. They have kept the old ways of fishing alive since the 1850s, using fishing weirs to catch fish. This police officer riding in a little car through the Holland Tunnel is definitely cute. The catwalk cars were launched in 1955, two feet wide with a swivel seat, allowing the tunnel police to keep an eye on drivers as they traveled from New Jersey to New York. According to the New York Times, the cars moved at a lightning fast 6 to 12 miles per hour and were the fastest way through the tunnel, gliding past traffic jams with no horn, because none was needed. Bob Ross, known for his relaxing public broadcasting service show, also ran a personal animal shelter and even nursed an injured alligator back to health. He was particularly close to a squirrel named Peapod, who often hung out in his shirt pocket. Ross once said, if we're going to have animals around, we all have to be concerned about them and take care of them. The music of the Romani people has drawn on themes from various Eastern European sources and is mostly made up of folk songs passed down from family to family, dating back as late as the 1400s. Ruth Law, a female aviator, bought her first plane from Orville Wright and achieved her greatest feat by setting a new cross-country distance record in 1916. During the early 20th century, a significant number of United States Navy sailors left the service before their time was up, leading to new rules being implemented by 1914. This photo captures the reality of childhood in the 1950s and 1960s, when girls could hang around with their feline pets in fancy dresses. It's hard to catch a photo like this, especially when cats aren't known to grin at just anything. These two must have had quite the friendship.
As you walk through the streets, you see two skeletal horses carrying their spooky riders right towards you. In the 1920s, this was a normal costume for people and their animals. In the early 20th century, fashionable young men were just as smart with their clothing choices as they were on the campuses of Ivy League universities, wearing unique pieces of clothing like Oxford bags, a wide leg style of trouser. These trousers were believed to be first popularized by the rowers on Oxford's crew teams and eventually grew to a width of 44 inches. The disembodied arm of the Statue of Liberty lived in Madison Square Park for nearly a decade because her body was shipped from Paris piece by piece. This triple-decker bus is not a functioning vehicle, but rather an April Fool's Day joke published in the corporate newspaper Echo Continental in 1926. It claims to show the brand new triple-decker bus that the city was working on at the time.